All right, let's get started. We're going to create a component and then a sketch with dimensions, and then we're going to extrude it into a 3D body. First, let's create a new component up here and click name and type in cutting board. Next, we're going to go up here and click create sketch and choose a plane. Next, I'm going to create a rectangle by going up here and clicking 2D rectangle, clicking a point out in space, dragging and clicking again. Next, I'm going to click sketch dimension and I'm going to choose this short side of the rectangle. Click out and press enter and I'm going to type in eight inches. You can type in whatever works for your piece of stock material and how big you, you want your cutting board. I want my cutting board to be 14 inches long, so I'm going to click this line next, drag out, click again, and type 14 and press enter. All right, so now we need to do something besides just make this a rectangle, at least for me. I think it's a little boring as is, so I'm going to add some fillets or some curves to the corners. So I'm going to click this fillet button here, click this top line, and then this line, and just kind of keep going around the rectangle until we have rounded corners on all four corners. For me, I think a one inch radius looks good. So I'm gonna type in one and press enter. And now we have a eight inch by 14 inch rectangle with rounded corners. Click finish sketch. And now the next thing we need to do is we need to extrude this sketch into a 3D body. So I'm gonna click the extrude button here. And then I'm going to drag out this arrow and I'm gonna type in one inch and press enter. All right, now we have a 3D body of our cutting board. Okay, to review, what we did was created a component, then we created a sketch with real world dimensions inside of that component, and then extruded that sketch into a 3D body. Now we need to move inside of the manufacturing workspace, like so. Click on this design dropdown, and we're gonna click on manufacture. In this workspace, what we're gonna do is create a setup and set our origin. Then we'll create a tool path to cut our shape. Lastly, we need to convert this toolpath into a line-by-line -line code for the shop bot. To do this, we'll use the post process feature. First, you will see the cutting board that we just made on your screen. Now we're gonna click on setup up here into the top left. Next, we're gonna click on this first tab here and under orientation, we're gonna choose select Z axis, plane and X axis. We wanna make sure that your origin looks just like it does on my screen. So we want the z-axis pointing up and the x-axis along the long side of the cutting board. So click to make it look like this, click on where it says nothing under z-axis and choose a perpendicular line like this. For x-axis, choose the long edge of your cutting board. Next, for stock point, we wanna choose this top point here. So if your point is over here for some reason, go ahead and just click this top stock point here. And there we go. Now we want to click on the stock tab. We want to change mode. Uh, we want to keep mode to, at relative size, but we want to change stock offset mode to no additional stock. Now press OK. Now we're going to create a toolpath. So let's do a 2D contour toolpath up here. First thing we want to do is choose tool number two in your tool library. We'll click Shopbot under Cloud, tool number two, quarter inch down spiral, and click Select. Next we'll move over to the next tab, which is Geometry and we're gonna choose the bottom outermost contour, like so. Deselect tabs for now, if they're on. Let's move over to heights. What we're looking for is this bottom height parameter. We're gonna choose from stock bottom with an offset of negative 0.015. Let's move over to the next tab, passes. Make sure that everything is unchecked currently. What we're gonna check is multiple depths. And under maximum roughing step down, we're gonna type tool underscore diameter forward slash two. We're gonna make sure use even step downs is checked and order by islands is checked. Everything else should be unchecked. Now let's go to linking. By default, lead ins and lead outs will look like this. They will be on. Let's turn on lead in. Let's turn, or sorry, turn off lead in and then we'll turn off lead outs as well. Make sure ramp is selected and there's a 10 degree ramp, and then press OK. And voila, there is our toolpath. The last step here is to convert or post process the toolpath into lines of code the Shopbot can understand. So, right click on setup one and choose post process. We need to make sure that post reads Shopbot OpenSBP. So, click the drop down, click choose from library, 
in the search bar here, type ShopBot and select this one, ShopBot Tools, ShopBot Open SBP, and click Select. Next, in our output folder, make sure that it's a folder like your thumb drive or some other folder that you can save your project to. All right, and under name, just go ahead and give it a name. I'm gonna call it cutting board, but you can call it whatever you like. And I'm gonna click post. This message will pop up here that said NC code posted successfully. That means you did it right. All right, to review, you created a setup, you programmed a 2D toolpath to correctly cut your cutting board, and you converted those toolpaths into line-by-line -line G code that the ShopBot will use to actually cut your project out. So the last thing we need to do is actually run this project on the ShopBot itself. And that'll be in the next video. See you there.